Bueno, buenos días a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Azalea Madrid, soy especialista de producto para el área de urología en Leven Medical, mi compañero Carlos del área de marketing. Les damos la bienvenida a nuestro webinar. Estamos, eh, es, un gran, es un gusto, eh, un gran gusto para nosotros eh, poder presentarles al doctor George Neymayer. Es el eh, médico urologo con más experiencia en lo que se refiere a eh, tratamiento con el stent URS, es decir, el stent ureteral de Alium Medical. Vamos a hacer una pequeña introducción eh, en inglés para, eh, con el doctor para poder eh, dar paso al inicio de eh, Hello everyone. Eh, It's a pleasure for us, uh, Levet Medical, uh, uh, present uh, Dr. Neymayer. Dr. Uh, Neymayer is a neurologist from Berlin, is uh, the most experimented doctor using uh, the URS stent in the world. So we hope uh, you can enjoy the presentation. Please, Dr. Neymayer, uh, you can start. Oh, thanks. Hello, welcome. Greetings to Mexico and all friends in uh, South America and Middle America. Um, my name is Jörg Nama and I'm working in the Medical University of Charity and my profession is urologist and gynecologist and my special field is endourology. That's why I'm really interested in stands and I want to show you what we can do with the new stands of Arium uh, in our hospital since the last nine years. This is a day's, uh, today's case and this is important to show how it works. It is a 72 years old patient with a pancreatic head tumor and endometrial tumor. It was a big open operation at the 25th August, and they make a simultaneously shoulder cystectomy, pancreatectomy, and radical hysterectomy, and all was okay. Uh, two days later, they developed a hydronephrosis and a ure urinoma. This is a typically problem in urology. We know it. Then they sent us yesterday to my colleague, and they do a double J inside, and you see you see a leakage in the middle part of the ureter here and uh, we know a double J is not only a good idea because in former times we know after this one a urinoma in most cases is not really healthy treated. So what we do today we see inside this is the ureter with the URS you see here very nice the terminal damage in the midline part here and it was uh, a terminal damage with a bipole clamp. What you see here is it is only a terminal damage but is the necrosis is now starting. If you leave only a stand inside in one week latest it will be necrotic totally and the um, double J will not drainage it really good. That's why what we do now is to do a stand inside. This is the, the picture, what you see here. There was also the leakage. Interesting for us was also that there's something inside of the kidney and we bring really fastly that stand inside it. The stand is fully covered. And if you have bring a fully covered stand inside, the fluid is only inside and so you have a real good drainage. In case of some problems, like you have a hematoma or a tumor also in the uh, kidney pelvis, then it is also good to do a double J stand also inside. We call so, called it stand and stand technique. The stand is really simple build. It. It's on stainless steel covered skeleton and around the skeleton, it's a fully part of um, a sheet there is waterproof 
You can bring it inside. You can see it really nicely with X-ray. You have marker at the ends. This is important for us to find and see also the ends of the stand. And it is simple then also to find. And if you want to bring it later out, you can bring it totally out with the forceps or you put only the end and the stand destroy itself and it is simple to bring it out. The good part is the sheet is waterproof and fully covered. There's no leakages inside. So the tissue can't engrow inside. So you can bring the stand every time in a good way in and out. The company start with two kinds of uh, stands. One is with anchor and one without anchor. The idea was to help the urologist to replace it. Uh, we know now that it is not necessary because you can go also with the forceps straight direct to the end of the stand to capture it and to bring it out. So you doesn't need any stand with for undergrad and retrograd inserting, you need only one stand without any anchor and you can insert it from both sides. See an interesting case that is horrible. That was a man, he had a neurogenic tumor and his ureter where had a length of 36 centimeters. It was in frontal side of the tumor. The tumor was partial replaced before chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And they had a problem that they had free leakages inside of the ureter nearby the tumor. What they want to do, only a, a, a normal double J is not working. So what we do now is to put a real stand inside. First, the surgeon do a drainage. This is typically one, but it's not work because the normal working of a stand is only in 10 to 20 percent to bring the urine between uh, or through the double J to the bladder, but 80 percent goes outside. That's why a wound healing of a urine uh, uh, of the ureter and to stop the urinoma, it's not possible in most cases. What we do now, we see inside it. We see also where is uh, the, the leakages. It was here, you see it white part. It's also thermal damage here nearby side. We go with the URS inside, go then with the guide wire inside and put stands from the kidney till to the bladder, free stands, tip stand and stand, allium covered stand. And so the drainage is in the same moment totally uh, and you can replace it. You see it here. We bring the stand here through the inside. It. The normal ureter looks here, but the tumor was also here. So we bring it inside and no leakage in the same moment. No problem. We start in 2011 with the stands because we start uh, first for uh, the treatment of ureteral vaginal fistulas. What we know is the stand was developed first to replace typically urology problems, stenosis or tumor obstructions. But we find out that is one good idea to use the stand, but a better idea is to use it for defects. It's worldwide the only stand who can cover the ureta waterproof in the same moment and you can replace it automatically. We use it for leakages, iatrogenic and thermal damages, surgery damages and for artificial materials like suture materials and also after tumor perforation and necrosis. New is since four years, we use it also for complete ureter defects, not only a partial defect. What you saw before is that was only a small uh, leakage inside of the ureter, but uh, the main way was, uh, was fixed. But you can do it also if the ureter is fully damaged.
What is the difference between the other stands on markets, the main difference, for example, between memo card or allium stand? The main message is that the allium stand is fully covered. Nearly, Uenta has nearly the same stand on market, but the difficult is that the Uenta can, can't be so good replaced because the surface can be in, um, uh, in growth inside of the tissue and you have problems to replace it. Memocard and metal resonance stand or a double J bring the, the urine inside and outside. And so never it will be close than also the defects. To bring it inside, it's from all really simple. Allium, it's inserting a technique. You can bring it undergrad and retrograde inside and you can replace it really nicely with the forceps and you have no problems because it is it destroy itself. The difference to Uenta is the surface is not so clear and it's not so soft, can be engrowed and can be destroyed later also the ureta. You know also uh, the, the published literature and the results of the stands and in the meantime, the living time of a stand is between one to 1.5 years of, for example, uh, the long time memo cut. And uh, we find out that our longest time where five years in middle an arium stand can be leave inside of the ureta for three to five years. 66 years old patient after a prostate cancer, a lot of treatments before radiotherapy, salvage, lymphonotectomy, laparoscopic ureterolysis, and so on. But at the end, the ureta is damaged and he developed also a fistula. In these cases, you have no chance to put a normal double J inside. That's why use as a allium stand. You see it here. There's a leakage. The ureta is damaged nearby the clips. After radiotherapy, clips around. Never the ureta will be healed uh, with a normal double J. What we do now is to bring the stand inside. You see. It's, uh, it's like an umbrella. If you open it, it goes straight direct to the wall. And in the same moment, if you bring fluid inside, the leakage is closed, all it stopped, and the fluid comes through. Interesting is also what you can see here on the stand. The ureta is above the ilia cross in a normal way, like you know it every time. Here, the stand can go straight out uh, his full uh, wideness because the stand has uh, a, a, ra a radius of, of nine millimeter. And so it's a big luminal stand. And you see it here from under the crossing of iliac vessels, like deeper one, there is a little smaller. so there is the strong part of ureta and this is also the damaged part it is good covered and the fluids uh, can go out without with no problem i say new is and this is the important part that we can use it also for ureteric bridging a typical case is for example after surgery rectum cancer and radiotherapy that a, big part of ureta is destroyed and is fixed. It is not a good idea after such treatments to make an ileum interponate or to make a reconstruction with a boari or psoas hitch because the blood is also strong and uh, so it is not a good idea. What we do now is we bring, if you have a leakage and a total leakage destroyed part, we bring a bridging inside. We put a stand totally about that part where it's damaged and see straight direct on the picture. The stand from here to there to the bladder, it's in a normal way. 
and here is like a bigger one. This is a part where this bridged. This is in this part 2.5 centimeters bridge with a stand, and all it's closed at the end. We have two types of stands for ureteric. It is one is 12 centimeters and the other is 200 centimeters. And the problem is that the way between the kidney and the bladder is mostly between 22 to 26 centimeters. So if you have also, uh, uh, you replace your problem with a fistula or with a bridging, but you have a longer stricture, then for safeness, for the first time, we put a stand inside, we call it the technique stand and stand technique to preserve the, the alum stand and later we can change it or we can replace it. Malignant melanoma, uh, that patient was uh, 68 years old. They make a total uh, vaginal uh, radical uh, call back to me. And what they done is that they damaged totally the distal ureter. We go now inside with the URS, inside of the ureter, 4.5 centimeters from the ostium, the ureter is cut it, and you see it now there at the end, there is cut it totally, also in the picture on that side, you see it here. And what we do now is to go with a scope inside that big heel, and we go and find the other way. In 60%, you have the chance to find the way with a URS. If you have no chance to do it in the retrograde way, then you need to make a rendezvous maneuver. This is the next case then what I can show you. But the interesting is, we find the way, we put a guide wire inside, and then if we do it, we want to bridge it. I say before, we have two points of uh, stands. One is 20 centimeters, the other is 120 centi uh, 12 centimeters, and we doesn't need stands with an anchor because we have now the chance also to do stand and stand inside it. Here's a patient. We find from here to there the way. We bring it now, the stand inside, and you see the urine fluid goes through and no leakage, and we bridge 4.5 centimeters of leakage of the ureter, and we doesn't need any treatment more on that side. You see it here from the ostium till uh, the start of the destruction of the ureter. Here it's starting the, the next ureter part and all it's okay. Complication management is not only in surgery of gynae, it's also in uh, for surgery uh, for, uh, for normal, normal uh, open surgery and most damages are after uh, sigma resection, bowel resection or in gynae case, complication management. A young lady, 49 uh, years old, had a big endometriosis. They make a hysterectomy. This is my wonderful town here in Berlin. And you, what you see here now, it's like on the river. You see a big urinoma. You see the end of the ureta, bladder in the frontal side. The kidney produce a little urine and a little hydronephrosis, but you see a big urinoma. What they done now is that they cut the ureta. In ultrasound, you have a chance to see where it's cut. It. This is the ultrasound transvaginally, and you see here the end of the ureta and the end of the ureta nearby side by the bladder. This is the picture from up. You can't uh, say, uh, see anything. Uh, with abdominal ultrasound, you need transvaginal ultrasound. We check it. Okay, it's urinoma. And we want to go in the same way like the case before. We go with the URS inside, but we didn't find the way. We go straight direct in the big urinoma here. 
what you see. What we done now is that we go then in the OR and go the way from undergrad, from the other side. We bring a guide wire through the kidney, through the ureter, and you see it, it comes here in the big side of the ureteroma. Then we go from the other side with the URS, take it and capture it and bring a stand inside and bridge the destroyed ureter. You see it here, this is the end, this is the other end because the stand is soft and you see it here, it's a small tile and there are the ends. In ultrasound check, you can see it then how it works. Important is, if you put a stand inside, you can replace the stand with a tip at the end. This is a big problem because if the umbrella is open, in some cases, if you have here a stenosis, that part, the tip of the end of the catheter can replace it and so and dislocate it. And what we do every time is to de decover, make an umbrella open, open the stand at the end. I go then through the stand back with a sheet, go to the tip, and then I can remove and I have no dislocation of the stand. Okay, follow up. This is a view near by my flat and it is nice part in Berlin. You see it now? This is the part what we bridge. Here, the stand, the end, goes to the bladder. This is the bridging part. It is free fluid around now because it's one day later. And at the end, if you check it, then two months later, it will be comes then all together. Two months later, we bring the stand out and you have no leakage more. The ureter, it's placed itself to the other end and it comes together without any stricture and so on. In ultrasound, you see it really clearly. This is a total ureter and you see the fluid, it's coming and this was the part where was a bridge, the ends of the ureter comes to another and you see the fluid without any stenosis, it comes through, you can see it really Quite right, you can check it with ultrasound and there's no part of uh, stenosis, no part of scar. You see it also in elastography, no scar building there, no problem. And with the URS, you see it at, also at the end, no scarring and so on. And we have a lot of these cases now and check it also in follow up and also later, never it uh, coming uh, scar or stenosis in that way. The only part what it can be developed, it's like some polyps. There uh, the ureter is coming together, but this is then not a problem. Interesting is also that we use it for real complication management. What you see here, this is a ureteral arterial fistula. We, my colleague put a stand out and it was a stand with stone at the end and he opened then the way to the iliac vessel. It was a big bleeding. I go now with the scope inside, put a guide wire inside, and what we done is then we put, now you see it, the stand inside it. This was the end, what I say is a tip. I open it now, you see it, it's coming. It is pressing against the wall of the ureta, and then it is closing in the same moment the fistula of the ureter and close also the ure ureteral arteric fistula. You can see it here really nicely. Also, this is then our uh, vessel surgeons want to save it from the other side too. We want to do a second stand, but this is from the vessel surgeons from the other side and they close it then also from this side. But our stand is working very well before because it's normal urine without any hematory and both sides are now closed and you doesn't need any treatment more only to put two stands on both sides if you have a ureteral arteric 
fistula. Simple to see, they check it also. This is from the arteric side, all it's closed, it's nicely, and this is the idea. We are a big university and we have a lot of these cases because the fistula between ureta and arteria comes after radiotherapy or after coiling because this is then the area uh, of the iliac cross area or internal area where is uh, not so good uh, um, nutrition of the uh, ure ureta and it destroy and this is then the part where you need the bridging. You see it, this is a coiling, you see here the stenosis part. What we do now, we do a, a stent inside, all it's closed. This stent is dislocated. It is not complete, cover it now, because it's coming down after uh, eight months a little deeper. Interesting is, that's why I show it to you. I go now inside of that part where the ium was uh, inside it before. And I want to show you that the bridging is working very well. What you see here, this is a distal part of the ureta, and now you see the brown part. This is the part where the total necrosis of the uh, ureta are. You see here uh, some infections around, and what we do now is to put a new stand on it, and the fluid is coming. The Ureta is destroyed from here to here, and what we do is only to bridge and all it's okay, and we doesn't need any treatment, because it's not a good idea to treat this patients. You can check it then, and all it's okay. We check it also from the, from the rest of the rectum. Here was the, the part, I go with the scope inside of the rectum, and we see all it's dry because the stent is working very well and no fluid is coming to the sacrum, all it's okay. Next case, same problem. We put now two stents on both sides. You see here the uh, macrohematory. It was also uh, a problem of ureteric, uh, arteric fistula. And in these cases, we need only two, uh, two stents and all it's okay. After vagina, uh, after laparoscopic hysterectomy, after bear time, uh, the gynae destroy two sides of the ureta, both sides, and destroy also the bowel. And in this part, we put now three allium stands inside to cover the ureta and the bowel. And all was in the same moment that was a cloak situation after the seventh day after the treatment, it was horrible, but with these parts, the patient was dry and we can uh, need only to treat one side because uh, the ureta comes uh, itself together. The interesting part is now, and this is our uh, main uh, recommendation, we use covered stent. They are really effective in case of stenosis and tumors, but better and the most indication is for closing urethral fistulas or for urethral bridging. We have a rate of closing of 91%. Closing of fistula, you bring it inside after three months, you can bring it out all, it's come together without any following treatment. Bridging, it works in benign. If you have a cutting only uh, before other treatments, in 100%, it's closed itself. In radiotherapy and uh, after tumor extirpation with uh, horrible cases, then it's, uh, the gap is closed in 100%. But in these cases, we leave the stand inside and then all it's okay and we have no problem. Fistula rate closing, it's high and it's simple to do and it's save our life because these cases comes every time at Friday if you want to go to your family and the gynae goes at home or the surgeon. What we do now is also to use it to modernize a lot of urology techniques. In that case of therapy of urethral, urethral, and anastomosis strictures. 
It is really simple what we do. We use only the UK, you know it. We cut the tip of the UK and we use the guide wire, the stainless steel to make then electricity on it and cut the stenosis monopolar. What you see here now, this is the stenosis nearby the iliac vessel after a gynae treatment, after endometrium carcinoma. They burn it really straight. Before was the nephrostoma inside, I find the way. And what you do now is to open that stricture. It is not recommended if you make only a dilatation and put a stent inside. And if you put the stent later out, the stenosis can come, uh, it, uh, can come again. But if you cut the stenosis really with monopolar under vision, not with laser, laser destroy more the ureta. You can go only straight with the monopolar inside. You cut then the, the stricture really, uh, really exact under vision. You have no problem. Also, if you're nearby the vessel, you have to check it before uh, where is the direction. In these cases, I go not near to the uh, iliac uh, area. I go more at nine o'clock. You see it now. I go through. I cut the stenosis. And what you see here now, I have no problems also with small bleedings because monopolar can make also coagulation on it. But I want to don't make more scar. It is important that you need to cut the stenosis, the, the stricture really properly. And if you cut it, then it's like a fistula or what you see before, like a bridging, what we do now. If you put a stand about that part where the, the stricture is totally cut, then the ureta will be replaced in a normal way and we can bring the stand out three months later and all it's okay. This is a new theory and a new method and we use it since four years and the cases are wonderful, but never it is recommended to use laser. Use monopolar with a trick what I show you, and you see it also in the animation to cut it, and the small um, small ureter will be opened. The ileum make it bigger at the end. It is uh, in a big size, and all it's okay, and all it's nice. Here you see the case. We go through very nicely, no problem. Then we bring the stand inside. That was the stenosis here and that part, no problem. The stand is at the end inside. Here you see it, there's a stenosis part in that area. Two months later, you bring it out, no problem. If you have a distal stenosis, we do it in the same way. You can go inside. That was a treatment after end-to-end -end anastomosis in a gynae department. They, they uh, do it too much. What you see here, what we do is now also in the same way. We go inside, we cut it with monopolar with a normal tip of the, uh, of the end of the UK. And it is really simple to do. And if it's cut it at the end, you can bring them the stand inside and all it's working very well. The theory is really simple. Cut the stricture, put a stand inside. And after the cutting, you see it. It is really a strong stenosis here in stricture. If you make in these cases only a dilatation, the stricture will come again and you have no chance to, uh, to replace the catheter. It is really effective to cut it monopolar, totally the stricture behind the ureta. You see here also the fat around. We destroy the, the ring of the stricture. Then you put at the end the ileum inside, all it's okay, and we finish then the treatment. So it looks like at the end, the ureter, and we bring it then out. This is a normal part then later, and all it's okay. If you have a stricture after radical prostatectomy in the frontal side, you see here a lot of clips after a robot uh, um, treatment, we do it in the same way. We not do only a cutting of the stricture, 
we go with monopolar, we open it straightforward, and then we put at the end uh, um, uh, typically stand inside. But in these cases, we use a RPS, a round stand, not a prostate stand. The tip is two, uh, three centimeters on top. You see it here, that is near side by side. That was an area where we cut it. This is the anchor through in the ball bear urethra. There is fixed, and so it is open. The patient can bring the urine normally out, and it is also dry because it's only the stainless steel in the uh, area of the uh, sphincter, and all oh, that's okay. Last case, and what we can do also, this is a gynec case. They do a vaginal hysterectomy. They have a leakage on top. What they do now is they, they suture it very well. They suture also the ureter. You see here the ureter. The white spots are the white spots are the suture. You can see it here in ultrasound very well. Suture, suture, suture. Hydronephrotic and uh, hydronephrotic ureter. It's dilated here. There's the stopping part. And what we do now is to find the way and to create a new osteum. Really simple to do. You see it with a scope. This is the bladder. They sutured it through. The osteum is totally sutured more than one time. Really nice to see here. And we go inside. And what we do now, it's a novel technique to create in, of a new osteum. In ultrasound, we check before where is the osteum and we have no chance to find the way to the end. If you cut it, then it will be developed a bladder vaginal fistula because that case was three days before treated. The ureter in the distal part is destroyed. This is the left osteum. This is the other side. And what we do now is we want to find the way to the ureter near side by side of the bladder. It is a simple trick. The patient has before a nephrostoma and they go with a guide wire under. And what we do now, higher on the lateral side, on the right side, we search with a needle, go through the bladder and search for the other side of the ureter. We saw in ultrasound that 3.5 centimeters from the osteum, the ureter is dilatated. I cut it now and I search. It's like to build a tunnel a tunnel between Europe and England. So we do it now in the same way. You see my colleague um, uh, put the guide wire and make a little uh, moving and it's moved. And what you see here, now we will find, now, okay, there's the guide wire, wonderful. Now the osteum will be here in this area new, the old osteum was here and the same story like before with the ureter, you have to cut it, really big one. You bring it in a bigger way. Then you can go with the scope inside, is a way enough. We go now with the scope inside. This is the ureter. And then we bring at the end the allium stand inside the ureter. Looks very well. Here are the first part of the first suture parts. Okay. And all it's okay, wonderful. And what we do now is to put the allium stand inside it. You see here the, the sheet. We bring the cover sheet back. And important is in these cases that the end of the stand looks in the bladder because it is then the part of the stand cover also the, the scar area where we, uh, we have it here. This is too deep inside so you can Take only a forceps inside your scope. You take then the end of the anchors and put it a little back. That is looking inside of bladder in these cases uh, of 1.5 centimeters, then it is enough. I bring it a little back and that's why I show it to you. You can put the stand a little in that position, but, but you can't bring it higher. So start higher and you see it here. It looks nice. It is inside it. All it's okay. Now we want to see how I do it. You see here the guide wire, my needle. I go, 
take it, you saw it in a video, and we replace it from here to there. This is a stand. It is all it's covered. It, it looks very well. Here's the part where is uh, the part it's inside of our new ostium. And now we looks like the patient then six weeks later. This is the left ostium. Wonderful. And this is the right side where we do the treatment. We put now the stand out. You see it here. It looks like an ostium now. You can take the end of the stand, take it, and then bring it out. Interesting is it, there is like glass. You can see it through. You see also the wall of the ureter. You need only to pull on all it's come out. And at the end, it looks like a normal ureter and you have nothing to do. The patient can go home. This is a normal ureter now. You see here like the skeleton. And after four weeks, it looks like a normal ureter, no problem. This is what I want to show you today. It was nice to show our results, what we done in our big university and the charity. And this techniques we developed since 2011 till now. And let us, if you have question, and I can ask you, uh, and I can answer you what you have uh, to ask me now. Thanks. Eh, bueno, pues con esto damos por terminado el webinar. En la parte central de su de su pantalla, a un lado del emoticón, está un cuadrito de diálogo. Ahí es donde pueden colocar sus preguntas para que una a una las vaya respondiendo el doctor Neymayer. Entonces vamos a iniciar con las preguntas que ya están eh, en el sistema. How many time you leave the stand? You can you you can leave the stand inside. Uh, in the longest time, for the longest time, for three to five years. Our mean time is now to leave the stand 2.8 years now for long treatments. Okay. Next um. question. Good question. Uh, how it works in the... Um, pelvic junction uh, stenosis. In these cases, we, uh, we, we cut the stenosis, like you see it in the midline part, and bring the stand inside. But you have to cut it really a uh, big one. But we use it also in a second treatment, because if you have a, a UPG stenosis uh, if, at young patients, We, uh, we prefer to make a, a laparoscopic or a robotic uh, a plastic, but uh, at the second treatment, if the stenosis comes again, then we use that technique what I show you with the allium stand. But you need then to cut the stenosis straight direct, but in these cases, we leave the stand one year inside it. Next question. Yes, it is similar. It is similar like a JJ, but the difference is it's a high volume stand, and so the, the you you can get more fluid through. And um, uh, the the main problem is why we use also uh, the allium stand and then the stand in stand is that the allium was if we begin with the technique. Uh, too short. It was only 12 centimeters. Now we know that you can use also allium stand, allium stand inside it, stand over stand. That was the second case what I show you with a patient with a uh, 36 centimeters long ureter. And this is then the best method because if you have problems with double J, also double J problems, misfeeling and so on, 
and also a uh, fast changing after stone therapy. We use in the, for these cases the allium stem because they live longer, had more fluid through, and we have not so much problem with stone building. Next question. What are the ideal candidate for this stand? Okay, this is a good question. The, the, the typically, the normal patient is not our patient group for the allium stand. Allium stand is recommended for complication management or for patients who have problems with stand. If they use long life stands, and if you need to change it a lot of times and they have painting, this are the group of patients for these are patients we recommend it. But for these patients, you have to put the stent not with the tip inside of the bladder because then they had a misfeeling, but not so much misfeeling like at a JJ, but it is better one. The best idea is then to put it one millimeter above the ostium uh, near to the blazer, and these are ideal candidates. Next question. Okay. No more questions. Okay. Uh, uh, pues ya no hay más preguntas. Les agradecemos a todos su asistencia. Esperamos que este webinar haya sido de utilidad. Y esperamos contar con el doctor Neymayer para otros temas eh, próximamente. So, um, that's, uh, that's all, doctor. We, have, we want to thank you for your conference. And uh, we, we, we can count on you in another uh, uh, conferences. Bueno, Thanks. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Eh, bueno, les agradecemos su asistencia y esperamos eh, verlos en nuestro próximo webinar. Gracias. Hasta luego. Thanks.